Guys, thanks for joining us. Thank you, man. No, no, no. It's an honor to be on No Fluff School, cool. man. Come on, yo. <laughs> so our careers have started because of your website. Kevin was being very complimentary a moment ago about the SLR guide, so thank you yep. for, for reading. I hope it played a small Helpful part. Helpful uh, source, you know, especially when you, you're trying to understand how the DSLR works and, uh, yeah, what is it? was it a starting point for us to shoot the film with that. Great. <laughs> You guys shot on DSLRs, Kevin. What you, you were the DP. What did you, mm -hmm. you shoot on, and how did you approach, um, you know, filming in all these different environments? The main uh, focus we wanted to, to put on the on the filming is to shoot everything outdoors, uh, no extra light, no reflector, and uh, nothing. It's like just raw Canon 5D uh, material and the 1D Mark IV as well, because Canon was the the equipment partner on the film, so they provided us a, a few lenses and a, and a 1D Mark IV on the second summer. But um, yeah, we, the, the thing is that we shot everything on bicycle. So because we chose the bicycle because it was the easiest way to navigate throughout New York City. Uh, you can get access to places you wouldn't with a car or even with subway. And um, so uh, the equipment had to fit in a backpack. So I got my 5D, a few lenses, uh, the, the mic, but you know, the boom pole that was crossing is a... Um, is a um, is backpack and a uh, and a basketball of course. Did you use like a shoulder rig? Like how did you stabilize? You just shot no by shoulder. Hand? Everything by hand. Shooting and hand with just a 24 70 millimeter and a 5D and a grip. And this is the only way you can really follow the the, the motion of the the ball players because when you have a shoulder kit, sometimes it's like you you're constrained, you know, because it's a little bit heavy or you can't really do the motion you want. Mm -hmm. So you said you had a grip on it or just, just yeah, just the photo grip, you know, with the two batteries mm -hmm. and. Uh, and it's heavy enough to avoid the, the shaking issue or mm -hmm. if you have like maybe strong arms or whatever, you can keep doing, shooting like that. So this is the, the setup we used, one tripod, boom pole, and I was dealing the audio on a, on a ZMH4 at the same time. Uh, but you, know, you were the writer, how do you go about structuring, going between all these chords and figuring out what the storyline is going to be and putting that all together? Uh, when you were shooting, were you thinking about that? Did mm -hmm. you structure it later? How yeah. did you approach that? I had this idea of the film initially being like me and Kevin's journey. However, we made an early decision f to sort of be a lens instead of on camera. Me and Kevin became the subplot, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of our journey. And then the, the story became this sort of like five part uh, trajectory where you learn the history of pickup, mm -hmm. the definition, how New York reinvented the game, how how tough the, the playground is and how, how positive it is. How many hours of footage did you end up with after you had filmed all summer? Almost 100 hours. 100 like hours. We had like two or four hour drives full, uh, including archive footage as well. And, um, yeah, it was a, an heavy process, you know, during, during the, the shooting process I was I was trying to, um, to check all the footage we shot during, every day, you know, and try to do my my timeline on Final Cuts, okay, these are the highlights of, of today. And uh, so we saved some time as well when we were shooting because it was so so, many, so much footage that my brother was cr going crazy. You know? <laughs> Editing the film was a mission as well and, uh, because we had so much material. Once you started getting a cut that you felt was getting close to ready, how did you approach the finishing process and the post-production and getting it ready for, for the big screen? I'm fortunate in that uh, Nick quested the uh, owner of Goldcrest is my former roommate. <laughs> we lived together with Stretch Armstrong back in the 90s. So I hit him up on the humble, like, yo, B, I got a trailer with Kevin, and, you know, would you like to take a look at it? And he peeped it, and he was like, yo, finish it here. And I had no idea what that meant. I mean, I'm a first-time filmmaker, mm -hmm. so it was Kevin. I, I didn't even know what post-production was. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we worked out uh, the, the parameters of that, and... John Dowdell, you know, did our color correction. The dude's like a legend. He does yeah. Ken Burns' docs. You know he, what I mean? He like, did my short yeah. as well. Yeah. But the pause they gave on it was yeah. insane. Especially, you know, with the, the 5D footage. John on the color correction was super helpful because he, he helped us reach like a real uh, cinematic level. Uh, and, um, sometimes we were uh, underexposed on some interviews because we were uh, composing with the light. Uh, some interviews were shot really late in the afternoon because we couldn't get access to some characters uh, before. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, Pee Wee Kirkland, his interview was super underexposed. He had the whole uh, shadow on his face and uh, uh, 
um, but the fact that we color corrected with John on his uh, Contel software was uh, super helpful. I mean, we saved a lot of shots, a lot of shots.